to see y'all here at church this morning. Y'all look good looking group. Let's all stand all over the building if you would. Holy Spirit Touch again, Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Let your power fall, let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word, Holy Spirit. Faithfulness is what I'm on. 
people said Lord we need you this morning you may be seated you join me in saying that amen Amen. man he's our one defense he is it he is our hope it's all about him it's not at all about me or you or this church or any leadership here it's all about Jesus he is our hope he is well Jesus is our hope but right now we got Samaritan's Purse advertisement here he wants you to know it's a boy Good job. We're thankful. Samaritan's Purse Shoebox Packing Time is this Wednesday night. This Wednesday night. You want to be here at 6. Let me tell you what. I'm sorry? 6. Let me tell you what. If you could come back this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon or Tuesday afternoon and help Miss Tammy, Brother Larry, and others to do what they're doing up until this point, come and help them. But if you can't, be here Wednesday night at 6. 
because we're going to have a shoe box packing time. You'll take a box. They'll already have some items in there, and they will help you to know what to do. There'll be a boys' room and a girls' room. they got stuff scattered out real nice so we can practice social distancing as much as possible. And uh, we'll do hand sanitizing. We'll be careful about all those things. You know what we're doing, and you know what we need to do to continue to be safe. But we want to do those things, and we want you to come and join. We need 80 people to do this to accomplish this in two hours. Well, it's quiet in this place. <laughs> But I hope you can come. If you don't feel safe doing that, we get it. But if you do, please come. Hey, if you want to come and wear a mask, we're all in for that. I guess that's me. If you want to come wear a mask, we're all good with that. You know us. We're real flexible. But come. That's this coming Wednesday night, OCC, shoebox packing time. And we're thankful for our paid political advertisement here. Join me in thanking him this week. <laughs> All right, you got that message right. Okay, well, I need to announce one more thing. Saturday, October, no, November the 14th, excuse me, uh, is going to be a big day here in this parking lot, weather permitting. We're going to be building beds. You say, oh, man, that sounds like an interesting thing to do. Good. We have a sign-up sheet. It's right here. Wednesday night, we signed up 20 people, and I know a few couldn't sign up Wednesday night. We need some more signatures. We need 40 people to help us. We're going to work from about 7.30 in the morning till noon. What will you do? You'll do whatever the leaders tell you to do. It's an organized thing. We're not reinventing it. I'm going to have to keep my mouth shut because I want to figure out a better, easier way to do something. We just all got to do what we're asked to do that day. We need everyone ages 11 and up is who can be involved. We need a lot of people that will put uh, just a vinegar-based stain on. We need people that can run a sander. We need some more people that's going to be a little more draft thrifty and can do some other things, but it'll be jigs and things that'll show us what to do. We're going to make 20 beds. That's our goal. We've had good, a good bit of stuff volunteered and given to us, and uh, we want to use that stuff for the kingdom to honor and glorify God. In our county, there are many children that don't have a bed to sleep on at night. All over the world, that's the case. We don't know the need in Knoxville, but we want, to, we want to find a need and fill a need. That's the whole premise behind what we're going to do. And this is a way that you can do missions right here at home. Some of you never had the opportunity to go abroad with us as we've gone on many mission trips. Some of you never had the opportunity to do that. Let me tell you, Saturday, November 14th is a great opportunity for you to do that. Amen? We got 20 people signed up. I need 20 more this morning. I see 20 that wasn't here Wednesday night that could sign up. Hey, Brother Champ will give you any details you want to know about that. It's going to be a fun day, exciting day. Might be some coffee and donuts and sausage biscuits and things around. Just thinking it could if that would entice you to come. All right. One other announcement that's uh, really, really important. There are lots of announcements. You need to come early to watch them. We're putting announcements up video-wise, trying to get away from handing out the bulletins at this time. We'll go back to that one day. But right now, they're up, and they're playing up until 25 minutes after. Because then we have a song, a uh, worship thing to prepare us for the last five minutes. So come a few minutes early. Hey, if you can get here at 9.25, you could just come five minutes early and be here at 9.20. And fellowship and kind of see what's going on with that. November, what is the election? Third? It's an important day. This morning, you are about to have the opportunity to join many from our church. As we come to a very solemn place. And we pray specifically for seven prayer points this morning. Let me just tell you, I, I want to pray right now that we enter to a place, I'm telling you, to a high place, to a place where we come and bow before the King of kings and Lord of lords. This morning, we're going to do some serious worshiping and praying. I am so thankful you made a choice to be here this morning. You get ready. We're about to see God do something great in our hearts this morning. Let me pray, and then this team will come back. You ready? Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. And great and mighty are you, and so, so, so worthy of our praise. We come to you now, Father, asking you to meet with us. 
Father, we don't want to do this without you. We've already felt your, your spirit, your presence in our midst now. Father, we ask you as we draw close to you that you would draw close to us even now. God, I pray for each one that's going to share, each one that's going to read Scripture, each one that's going to pray that you fill them and anoint them and guide them and direct them. This morning, Father, I want this to be a place where you are welcome to have an open spirit that we can worship and celebrate today. Father, bless these up here singing. Bless this praise team. We're missing one, Miss Colleen. We pray you continue to heal her. But bless these that are here and assembled this morning on this stage. Thankful, thankful for each of them. Thankful for their commitment and dedication here each and every week as they come and lead us in worship. Father, for these in the pews this morning, Father, I pray that this would be a service that they can connect. And Father, that can only be accomplished by you. Father, I pray that you'd speak deep into our hearts this morning. And I pray, Father, that what we say and do and how we act and respond this morning would bring honor and glory to you. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's all stand, if you would, again. Great old hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet Hour of Prayer, Sweet Hour of Prayer.
and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the sun of God is going to be a morning of celebration through prayer and thanksgiving. Franklin Graham, who I deeply, deeply respect, had called for a national day of fasting and prayer. Prior to that, I had some thought about today being an election sermon. And I said, oh, he's political again. Well, I had that worked out and then Franklin called for that because next Sunday I wanted to have a day of prayer. And it looked different than what we're going to do today, but that's okay. Uh, I believe God's in that. So I want to share with you just a few words to kind of start us. And then each person that's involved in this has a cue and a time and they know when they're coming. And we're just going to walk through this. But I want you to really open your hearts this morning and allow yourself to be part of this prayer service. Because though they're going to be up here saying a few things and reading a few verses and praying, I want it to be connected. I want you to be connected to what we're going to do this morning. So, sometimes I think about the, the, the news. I, I think about the uncertain times. I think about the, the peaceful protests. I, I think about the, the stuff going on in our world. I mean, it seems like there's all these debates and things, not the, necessarily the, the president and the vice president debates, but they're just, our world's in a mess. It's hard to even know where to begin sometimes. I just know this. I just know this. That we need to have our hearts to have a deep-rooted desire for God's grace and mercy over our country. Would you believe that? Amen. I just believe we really need for God to heal our land. Would you agree? Amen. I mean, think about all the battles. Think about all the views. I mean, think about the differences. I know Brother Ruskin Clay and I have uh, this thing that we do. We, we, we share what we agree upon much more than what we disagree upon. We don't disagree upon but a few things. But many times what we disagree is what we focus on. And this morning, that's what this is about, what we can agree on. That's what I want us to do, is focus on what we can agree on. Sometimes when I'm thinking about what I disagree on and what others disagree on, I do this, and I, I want you to consider doing this from now on. I want you to consider asking yourself, have I prayed? Well, that changes things. Let me just tell you, prayer changes things. Sometimes my wife doesn't do everything she should do correctly, right? Y'all know that? Sometimes I don't do everything I should do correctly. 
How come all the women said amen right there? Y'all are biased, I can tell. No, no, that's, that's true. But you know, in the midst of that, you know what? I've learned prayer changes everything. Wouldn't you agree? Next time you're in a confrontation or a difference with somebody, just, just pause and pray. You will be amazed what will happen. You see, folks, God never left us here to fend for ourselves. Never. He doesn't want us to wrestle with worry. He doesn't want us to be consumed with fear. He doesn't want us to be tempted towards even hatred. God doesn't want us to do that. As a matter of fact, he reminds us he is with us and he will help us if we will let him. Every time we call upon him, he will be there in times of need. He reminds us that he has not lost control. As a matter of fact, God has a plan. And his purpose will prevail. Let me just assure you this morning. There is no magic formula for what we're about to do this morning. As a matter of fact, I think about verses and words and prayers. There could be hundreds of other verses we could use this morning. But what I want us to do this morning, and I've emphasized this to everyone that's a part of this, is just be led by the Spirit. And that's what I want this to do, is be a Spirit-led prayer time this morning. There is no particular power in this particular kind of thing that we have. The power is in the name of Jesus. He has the power to forgive us, to change us, to renew us, to restore us. No matter how uncertain things may be today in our culture, in our world, God has promised us that His Word, the Word of God, will not return void. It won't be that it doesn't accomplish things. So let me just give you what we're going to do. First off, you need to realize prayer plus God's Word equals power. Prayer plus God's Word equals power. And that is the pathway for miraculous things to happen. So that's really what we want this morning, some miraculous things to happen. Yes, across our land. Yes, in our nation, but in your hearts and my hearts this morning. Church, God hears our prayers. Listen, church, he knows our needs. Listen, church, there is great power in uniting our hearts together and turning our hearts toward him and praying on behalf of our nation. So I've asked Brother Champ, our deacon chairman, to come and begin this morning with just a heartfelt led prayer this morning. Then Miss Amy's going to share, and then there'll be others coming up. And don't be too distracted by that. We've got to get them up here, and we've got to adjust the mic and all that. You just let the Spirit speak to you this morning, as the Spirit will. Brother? Y'all pray with me this morning. Father, we love you, and we come to you today, Lord. As Brother Bill expressed, Lord, we, we want to tell you how much we need you this morning. Lord, we're living in uh, what some call unprecedented times. Lord, we know that's not, that's not the case for you. Lord, you knew billions of years ago, Lord, right where we'd be right now. Lord, you, you've, you've seen um, the hatred and the evil since you created us, Lord. And you know right where we stand this morning. And Lord, my prayer today is not... For some outcome, uh, as Brother Nick prayed earlier today as we gathered, Lord, not for one person, not for one party, not for one particular thing that would make our life easier, Lord, but I pray this morning that you'll do something inside of our hearts individually. Lord, a revival starts in us, Lord, in me, and Lord, I need you this morning. As, as much as I needed you the day I called on your name for salvation, Lord. And that's what this country needs, Lord. We need, we need you to do a work in our lives this morning, Lord. Uh, not something a church service could do. Not something a political party could do. Not something that, that we can go and buy at a store, Lord. We need a good old-fashioned moving of your spirit in our lives this morning, Lord. And we, it's time, Lord, that you... Uh, that you draw your people back to you. But, Lord, we realize that 
we can't do that without a response from us, Lord. Lord, your word tells us to repent. Hmm. And Lord, that's what our nation needs is repentance. And Lord, it's not yes. going to come in a wave from California into Mississippi. Lord, it starts right here in Calvary Baptist Church and hmm. Champ Adcock and others that are here today, Lord. We need a decision this morning from your people. Hmm. Lord, it's time for your people not to stand up and fight against a political party, Lord, but to stand up and say, Lord, I surrender to you. Hmm. And, Lord, I surrender to the call that's on my life, that you placed on my life. And, Lord, that's what I want from this service this morning. Lord, we're going to hear from your word this morning. And I pray it will change us, Lord, this morning. And we'll walk out of here and we'll be different, Lord. We'll be compelled to pray. We'll be compelled to love, Lord. And we won't, we won't face the hatred of the world with our own strength, Lord. But we'll face it with strength that you've given us, Lord. We'll face it with a love that you've placed in our hearts, that you've, a love that changes our lives, a, Lord, a love that's played out, Lord, in our, in our family, in our personal life, Lord, and it'll, it'll, it'll flow out into our churches and into our communities, Lord, and we won't have to do anything special. It'll just come out. Lord, I pray that you'll get a hold of some folks' hearts this morning, Lord, and you'll compel us to continue, to put our hand back on the plow, Lord, and that you'll bless and that you'll, um, you'll be in control of our lives when we leave here. We, we love you. We thank you. And I just pray that your word will speak to us now as we go. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. As the ones come, they'll be reading or leading, excuse me, leading in seven vital prayer points that we want to share with you. We could have a hundred this morning, but we've chose seven that we want to share. The first point this morning is that um, our nation would turn back to God and that God would help us. We need him desperately now um, to renew our hope. I think we all get a little discouraged and um, feel hopeless. Um, we need his forgiveness and healing. We've turned from him by taking prayer out of schools and um, football games and things like that. And so we need him to forgive us for those things. Um, and that his spirit would sweep across our nation and draw us um, and others out of darkness. Um, believers everywhere should draw close to him and seek his face like we never have before. I'll read, um, going along with Amy's point that she read. Uh, from Second Chronicles 7:14, if my people who are called by my name will humble, the, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will heal, heal their land. And from Psalm 33:12, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful to be here. Um, We'll, we're grateful, as the song we sang said, to be your own. I'm thankful to be your own. Um, you are our hope, Father, and I pray that in the next coming weeks and in months and how long, um, however long, Father, I pray that you um, remind us of that, that, that our hope is not in another person, another leader father although we we do pray for them father and what's happening in our nation father we we pray and trust that that you are our living hope that you shepherd us father and um, you lead us we are your sheep and we just trust that you um, that you will go before us father and and love us and um, and that we'll come back to you father those who are lost will find you and even in the midst of the turmoil in our nation, Father, I pray that you just reach out, Father, and supernaturally, Father, that people will be drawn back to you. Thank you for all that you do for us, and um, help us to remember that you love us and that you are our hope. Is that okay? Amen. He is our hope, and we pray that our nation would turn back to him. Our second prayer point is that we would, we would be faithful to pray for our leaders, local, state, national leaders, and everyone that's in authority. 
and um, and we do. We want to pray for them. We want to pray that they that they make wise decisions. That they are led by the Lord. That they um, that they would uh, lead in a way that would please the Lord. That would um, that would allow the church to do what the church is called to do. Right? We want freedom to do what we do. But we know. I'm not going to preach. But we know that the future of the church is not in the hands of these men and women. Um, now, the, the future of America might be, but not the future of the church. And the future of the church is, is not, um, if, if America falls, the church of Jesus Christ will be okay. In fact, we'll be strong. And so that's our prayer. But we pray for these men and women because we, we care about the things that God cares about. And so we pray that they would love life the way God loves life. That they would love the holiness of God the way that God does. And um, that we, we pray for them not because our hope is in them, but because the church is a prophetic voice that says this is what God cares about. And we want everyone in the world, not just America, to know him. And we want to continue doing with freedom what God's called us to do. And so that's the second prayer point, that we would pray for men and women in leadership on every level that the name of Jesus Christ would be known. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 2 says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Proverbs 29, 2 says, When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Uh, for the freedoms we have in this country and that we can meet openly and, and have a service like this. And uh, I thank you for all those that serve in these leadership positions in our country, the local, state, national, all those positions. I thank you for those people and their willingness to serve. Um, I'm sure it's often a thankless job. Um, it's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of complaints and problems they have to deal with. And I pray for wisdom uh, for, for those in leadership, and I, I acknowledge that, you know, wisdom can only come from you and knowing you and your word, and, and that's, that's what we need in this country is the, the leadership and the people to come to know you. That's the only thing that's really going to change our country for the better long term. And I pray that we would remember the scriptures that we read. There's a command to pray for those in authority, all not just the people that we agree with or that we like or that are of a certain political party, but all. And I pray that we'd remember to do that. We'd be faithful in that and um, that, that our country would just turn to you. In Jesus' name, amen. The third thing that we're going to pray about is that we would recognize God's sovereignty over everything. His word reminds us that he is the one who ultimately has the power to position all of those in leadership and to remove them. Sometimes I ask, if God's going to do whatever he wants to do anyway, then why should we pray about it? But more than anything, God desires that our hearts be set on him and his will, and he chooses to work on behalf of his people always. His word reminds us that there is great power in prayer as we join together in unity and seek to follow after him. Daniel 2.21 says, It is God who changes the times and seasons. He sets up kings and he removes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. And Psalms 33.11 says, But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. Let us pray. Father, we come to you now. We still our hearts before you, Lord, and we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this freedom that we have to come and worship you without fear of persecution, Father God. Lord, we know that you are sovereign, that you are in control of everything, Father God, that we are in control of nothing. And everything that happens, Lord, filters through your hands. And Lord, we know we don't know what's going to happen, 
in the election, but Father God, we know you already know that. And you're already there and you've already um, begun to work in the hearts and lives of those who will be in leadership, Lord. And we, we just sometimes do fear and we think, what's going to happen if, if this happens or if that happens, Father God? But we just need to trust you, Father, because you are the one in control. Help us to not look to our own ways, but look to your ways, Father God. Your plans are greater than any plans that we could ever dream or ever imagine, Lord. And then it says, why pray? Some ask that. If you're already in control and you already know, Lord, what's going to happen, why pray? Your word tells us to pray, Lord, and that's an act of obedience. And, Father, I pray that you would help us to, to follow that act of obedience. And we know, God, that prayer does change things. And, Lord, you ask us to pray. You command us to pray. And when we all gather together, Lord, with our hearts unified and stilled before you, and we pray and we do turn from our wicked ways and we seek your face, Father God. We know that you will heal our land and that things will change. And so I pray, Father God, that starting with me, Lord, that I would be more obedient, Lord, to come before you and pray. Your will be done, Father God, not my will. Lord, we know that we, you want our desires to be made known to you. But, Father God, ultimately you want us to trust you with our hearts and our lives, Lord God. And I thank you for your grace and your mercy. And I thank you for your forgiveness that you have um, forgiven me for my sins, Father God. And I just pray if there's one here today, Lord, that doesn't know that you are the one that's in control, I pray, God, today that they would surrender their lives to you, Father, and they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are the sovereign God. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, our, our fourth prayer point this morning is that we need to pay attention to what's going on in the world and we need to recognize that the battle that's going on is not um, against people, against what we can see. It's against things we can't see. And we need to just recognize that and recognize that the, the real enemy here is not um, a political party or one certain person that is Satan. And, and his evil forces that that he sends around to uh, to just mess us up, you know, get get us out of rhythm and get us out of unity. Um, you know, Satan's goal is to steal, kill, and destroy, and we need to. Uh, he wants nothing more than to do that with us, especially the church. So we we need to stay on our toes, people, and and uh, recognize what's going on in our world today. Um, we don't need to waste our time and our energy fighting against one another. I mean, that's not going to accomplish anything. That's not going to bring unity to our nation, uh, unity to our world. So, especially unity in our church. That's that's what we need. Um, so let's just stay aware of the devil's evil plans. Um, stand against his attacks through the power of Christ and His Word. And that that's how we do that. Um, I don't want you to do it now, but this afternoon, go home and look up Ephesians chapter 6 and read verses 10 through 18, and it will tell you exactly how to stand against the devil and his evil plans. Can I tell you that when we start doing things for Christ, when we start taking a stand for Christ, it paints the target on our back. Satan will come after us when we start doing what God has asked us to do. In Daniel chapter 1, Daniel did what God told him to do. He stood up for what God said was right. And Satan came after him for, over it. And that's the same way with us. When we stand up for the lives of innocent children, and when we stand up for what God said is right, it paints a target on our back. And us as the church have a target on our back because we're trying to do what God told us to do. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against authorities and against powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And then um, 2 Corinthians 10.4 says, For the weapons of our warfare is not flesh and blood, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Um, the fifth prayer point that we have is that we would not surrender to worry, fear, or defeat. 
that we wouldn't grow so weary that we wouldn't just give up and check out. I do that a lot of times. Sometimes I just don't even want to look at the news or I can't look at it because it will take over my life. Our voices are important now more than ever before. Headline news stories can often incite fear, worry as we think about the future. We don't have all the answers and we feel powerless to change what we believe needs to be changed. We look around us and see dark days and evil often seems to be winning. But God's word still remains true in it all. He is the answer. He's the light that breaks through the darkness. He's the one who sets free and the power to restore our nation. And we need this more than ever now. Psalms 112.7 says, They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. One of my favorite verses kept me through some hard times is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's a great verse. Let's pray together. Lord, Father, we come to you today realizing that there's a lot in our world to be worried about. We could worry and worry and worry, but God, it won't change things. You've told us that worrying just is a waste of our time. But what we really need to do is have faith and trust you. We don't need to be anxious about anything. But we, when we become anxious, we need to take these things to you in prayer. There's the old hymn that we haven't sung, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a privilege to carry all these things to a God that cares for us in, in prayer. God, we are battling many evils that Satan has thrown up against us, as we've already discussed. This is not a political battle. It's not a person that we're fighting, but it's a spiritual battle. It's a battle against evil. And God, as we look at our world changing and think about how things in our world could change, and they could, with all the, with all the stuff going on around us, we don't know who's going to be elected as our president. We certainly know the way we what we want to happen but God we don't know what's going to happen and we worry about those things and we think about those things that I certainly do from time to time God forgive me what I do and I would think if we were truly confessing our sins today we would say we all worry about it some but God we know that we just have to remember exactly what this verse that we just read says that we just got to be anxious for nothing We've got, to, we've got to quit worrying about everything. And we've got to come to you in prayer and bring our requests and our petitions to you, believing that you can and you do have the power to change it. And if, Lord, you don't, just as the three Hebrew boys said in the fire, God, we know that you can change it. But even if you don't, we're going to still love you. We're going to still follow you. We're going to still serve you. We're going to praise you when we win. We're going to praise you when we lose. We're going to keep praising you, God, because you are in control. And anything that happens around us, no matter how bad we think it is, you still got us in the palm of your hand. Help us to realize that. Help us to believe that. Help me to believe that, Lord. And help us not to be anxious, but to trust you in all things. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to our own understandings in all our ways, Lord. Help us to acknowledge you, and you will direct our paths. We love you. We praise you. We pray for this nation. In Jesus' name. The sixth prayer point is to remind us that we need to pray for those in authority over us, those who are unjustly attacked and accused, that God's protection would cover his people, that he would surround them with a favor as a shield, that the plans of the enemy would be hindered and truth would be made known, that as believers we would be discerning and quickly recognize what is real and what is a lie. OK, 
Okay, the, um, the sixth point of prayer is um, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that accuses you in judgment will be condemned. And the second verse is Psalms 125, 1 through 2. Those who trust in the Lord are, are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the mountain surrounds his people, both now and forever. Join me as we pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I just come to you right now, dear Lord, and just um, asking you, Father, for your protection over our family, dear Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, our family is under attack, and it's unjustly. And, um, dear Lord, I just pray for, for Bill that's in authority over me, Father, as he's um, the leader of our household. And, dear Lord Jesus, I just um, pray that as he is the leader of this church, Father, that you'll just... Give him wisdom how to lead our family and how to lead this church, Father. And dear Lord Jesus, I um, I just come to you right now, dear Lord, and just um, asking you to surround us, Father. Surround us with your love and your grace. Dear Lord, just bind us together, Father, that we will put our hope and our trust in you, Father. And dear Lord, that we can trust you, dear Lord, when things um, are... Seems like they're going south, dear Lord, and all we have to do is just call out on your name, Father. There's power in the name of Jesus. And dear Lord Jesus, I just pray for um, those leaders that are in authority, dear Lord, over our county, Father, and the ones that are over the authority of our state, Father, and um, over our country, Father. And dear Lord, I just pray that you'll just I'll uh, draw our hearts to you, Father, and just draw us closer together, dear Lord Jesus. And, dear Lord, we just um, pray that your Holy Spirit would just speak to every heart, dear Lord Jesus. They'll, they'll come to know you as Lord and Savior. And we just pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. seventh PowerPoint, that our hope would remain in the Lord, that we would recognize his great power, that we would trust him and believe that he is able, and nothing is impossible with him. He alone is where our real hope is found, not in our leader, not in the economy, not in the condition of our nation today, or even in the future of tomorrow. I just want to say best thing we can do is get out and vote, and uh, the best thing we can do is pray and then vote, but uh, I just, I hate to see uh, somebody get in there and mess up our country that uh, our forefathers have fought for, and lives are lost, but you get the wrong man in there, he's gonna, he's gonna mess up everything, and without the Lord, we have no hope. In God's word in Hosea, uh, correction, Habakkuk, Habakkuk 1 5, it says, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed, for I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. And then Habakkuk 3 2, Lord, I've heard of your fame, I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. Let's pray. Our God and Father, we come remembering the things that you have done. You've recorded 4,000 years of the things you've done in your word. And we think, Father, of 
all the way back at the beginning. Lord, this place we stand on this earth, all this didn't just happen by, by some weird explosion or something. Your hand was there, Father. <laughs> We're awed at your hand as we see the creation that you have made. And then, God, people in our day and age think it's such a great thing to go to the moon. And Lord, you've named all the stars. And Lord, what a, what a marvelous thing. And Father, you're here in our midst. We thank you for it. We thank you that we can come and you can hear us. But God, we thank you that we can know the God of the universe that does marvelous things beyond what we would ever think. Yes. And we look back in your word and look how you have reigned over and done impossible things to take your people out of the land of Egypt against the great Pharaoh. But you made him look like nothing, Lord. <laughs> and in our day and age, Father, we look back and we, we're, we're blessed to remember that, that your Lord, your hand even now, even yet, your hand is not shortened. Your strength is not diminished. You are able, Father. So we pray that you would give us the confidence to trust in you, the things that we cannot do. But Lord, in your greatness, you rule over it all. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 The Lord is able. Amen. Amen. He is so able. Just seven things to think about and to pray about that we talked about this morning. And you'll have other opportunities to know those again. If you, you can always take the YouTube video and look back. As a matter of fact, Patrick, I told you to stop it at the end of my prayer. Brother, leave it running because we're going to sing some more songs. The only way I know to communicate that to you. Let me, let me share a few closing The team's going to come back up. We're going to sing a couple of songs. We want to give you an opportunity to respond. Maybe this morning you sit here and they, they pled for salvation. They pled for you and I to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. And maybe, maybe the power of the Holy Spirit has not taught you to pray this morning, not to seek Him that way, but to be born again. Maybe this morning you know that your prayer life has not been what it's been. Maybe this morning you want to come to an old altar and you want to bow before Him, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and you want to spend some moments here praying this morning. We'll give you that opportunity. Let me close like this. I personally have a view of everything just like you do. But let me say this. Whomever the candidate of choice may be for all of us, let me rest you in this. Remember this. God has a plan. He is not surprised. That doesn't matter if it's a local, a Senate race. It doesn't matter if it's a national. It does not matter. God has a plan. He is not, this morning, pacing heaven's floors. Although we say sometimes when it thunders, the Lord's moving His furniture around. He is not pacing this morning over what is going on in our world. He is not worried about who will win or what the latest polls are like we are. But here's what he's called us to do, to pray, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. As a matter of fact, he's called us to pray and to be salt and light into the world. You have a voice and I have a voice. That voice is a voice to pray and to vote. Somebody told me the other day, they don't know what to do. They, they just feel like it's all lost. No, it's not. You pray, you vote, and then you pray some more. And then when you get through praying, you pray some more. And when there's nothing else to do, you just stand firm in your prayer that God's will will be done. We can trust this, folks. We can trust this this morning. The outcome is in His hands because I've read the end of the book and we almost taught all the way through it. Back here in the end of the book, in the book of Revelation, we know who wins. Sometimes it doesn't look that way. You remember this today as we close. Remember this truth on which our nation was founded. We are one nation under God. 
No matter what the others say, we were founded under those principles. We're going to sing a, a, a wonderful song at the conclusion of this. And as you think about all of that, we are one nation under God. And our hope, let me tell you, our hope is not in the White House, the courthouse, or any other house. Our hope is in Christ and Christ alone. And He gives us strength. He gives us power. Psalm 62 verse 5 says, Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. Listen to that. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone, because my hope comes from the Lord. Join with us as we pray. The team's going to come back. We're going to give you an opportunity to come and pray at an altar. Sing about one or two more songs and go to Sunday school. But listen, God is speaking this morning. Please be willing to respond to whatever He's calling this morning. Join me as we pray. Bow your heads. Why don't you stand? Why don't you stand? Everyone stand. And then you'll be ready to respond. Father, we come to You in the name of Jesus. And we thank You for that great power. We praise You and thank You as has been prayed before. That we have been set free by the grips of sin and death. We are Your people. We, we know that Your grace has been extended to us. We know that You have granted us freedom. We know that You give us protection. We know that You empower us with Your strength. This morning we ask You, Father, for a great awakening. Awakening, yes, like some other generations saw, no, but even greater. An awakening across our land. We ask You, Father, in Your name, in Your name this morning, that Your plans would be clear. I pray that the evil one would be bound. I pray, Father, that many would come to know You as Lord and Savior, even during this season of election. We pray, Father, that many would see the light. We pray, Father, today that You would open blind eyes to see. Those that can't understand what we're talking about, those that would watch this video on YouTube in the days and weeks ahead, Father, that people's hearts and lives would be changed. Father, we pray that You would unify Your people, starting here with our church. Continuing into Knox, County. Continuing into the state of Mississippi. Continuing all across the land. Many say there's no hope. Oh, we know our hope is in the Lord. We pray for those who are in authority. We pray that you give them wisdom, discernment on how to lead. We pray that you would actually give people wisdom as they go and vote. Would you allow strong, faithful men and women to serve across this land? Would you call them that aren't to be your people? Father, would you heal our land? Would you forgive our sins? Would you show your face? Oh, Father, our life, our times are in your hand today. Father, as we come now, thanking you for what you've done this morning. Now we ask you to speak and let us respond according to whatever that is this morning that you've encouraged and called us to do. I believe many need to come and pray. I I believe many need to walk over and embrace with the family. I just believe, Father, you want to do a lot of things in the hearts and lives of this in this room this morning. Will you have your way in these final moments? That's my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you want to come up here and pray, hey, come right now. You want to come with your family? Come and pray right now. Maybe you want to go grab somebody. One of your family members. Maybe you need to come up here and see me this morning. Maybe you need to come give your life to Jesus this morning. Maybe you want to come be a part of Calvary Baptist Church. I don't know what you need to do. But listen to the words. Gentle shepherd. Come and lead us. That's what we've been asking him to do. Just come lead us, Lord. Your strength from day to day. There's no other we can turn to who can help us face another day. 
gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. Let that be our prayer today. For we need, we need your help. You to help us to help us find our way. way. Oh, look, look at it. Gentle shepherd, come feed us, Lord. Come and feed us. For we need your strength from day to day. I need that strength. How about you this morning? There's no No other place to turn, folks. Who can help us face another day? Gentle shepherd, come lead us. Come Lord. and lead us. For we need. For we need you to help us find our way. And all God's people would say, "In God, good." Man, thank you for being here this morning. I want them to close with a special song this morning. You probably ought to sit down, but you won't be able to sit through the whole song. So if you want to just stay standing, you probably just want to stand. Because we're going to sing about God Bless America. Well, that is our prayer. This song is kind of a prayer. God bless the USA. And that's what we want. That's what we want them to do. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life. And I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my Lord above to be living here today. Cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away. Everybody sing on the chorus with me. And I'm proud to be an American Where well, at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the man who died Who gave that right to me And I'll gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee across the plains of Texas from sea to shining sea from Detroit down to Houston from New York to LA there's pride in every American heart and it's time we stand and say to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the man who died who gave that right to me and I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA To be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget The man who died Who gave that right to me And I'll gladly stand up Next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA God bless you. Wow. Thank you for being here this morning. If you can stay for small groups, please go in the back. we got coffee. Go through. They'll serve you coffee. If you must leave, God bless you. Have a great rest.